Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Johnny. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to install emulators on your Steam Deck and basically any game that you want to emulate on any emulator from Nintendo, PlayStation, PSP, a bunch of emulators, pretty much all the major emulators and bonus emulators as well. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to go ahead and switch to your Steam Desktop OS and you're going to want to go ahead and open up Firefox. Uh, make sure to download Firefox on your Steam Deck. Um, usually it comes in pre-installed. You just have to download it with your Wi-Fi. You're going to want to go to this website called emudeck.com. Once you go to that website, emudeck, you should pop up right here. You want to go ahead and click on the download area and you're going to want to go ahead and download app. It should complete pretty quick. And then you're going to want to go into your file manager uh, or however you have it set up on your Steam Deck. And you're going to want to go to the folder that says downloads on your file manager. And you're going to want to go ahead and open up the first one that says emu deck. Um, and I'm going to show you what options you get afterwards. So you should get this. It says installing emu deck. Um, basically... It tells you okay, it tells you all the changes and everything, all the new features and everything that is included with it. All right, so you're going to get two modes, easy mode and expert mode. I think on expert mode, it shows you the SD card. So if you have an SD card inserted into your Steam Deck, you can install it to that. Or you can install it internally with the SSD drive that your Steam Deck has. You can either install it in expert mode or not. Personally, I would go with easy mode if you don't really want to complicate yourself with expert mode and it's just much easier. Um, so just do it with expert, uh, I mean easy mode in my opinion. Um, and then it'll start creating ROM folders in the home deck. Uh, it'll start creating a lot of folders for you and it'll also start in downloading the cores from RetroArch and installing the ROM manager. Basically everything that you can think of. So you just got to wait until the process completes. It usually takes about four to five minutes, uh, depending on your SSD, what you have on your console, or if you have a really fast SD card, it should load up pretty quick. It does take quite a bit, but just wait for it to install. And it does install pretty much every single major uh, emulator out there. And what I like about it, that it downloads all the latest updates from it as well. Um, so yeah. Just wait for it to finish and it shouldn't take that long. One thing that I do recommend that you do get an SD card. This is up to personal preference, but the reason why I like the SD card more on this is because emulators, uh, usually the ROMs aren't really that hard to run. It doesn't really make a big difference in terms of loading times. So if you want to save some space up for your internal SSD card, in your Steam Deck, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, just installing it on an SD card. But of course, if you have one terabyte or 512 gigs of space, it really shouldn't be an issue for you. If your screen goes dark, it's probably because the Steam Deck is in sleep mode. All right, so it's installing MAME. As you guys can see, it, it, it takes a while, but it installs a lot of files on there. Um, I believe emulators from Nintendo Switch, even the Wii U and GameCube, all of those emulators are included here. Obviously, some will run better than others, and some will run less better. But either way, it shouldn't take that long. Um, probably, like I said, like five minutes, maybe even two or three minutes at tops. It's almost done. As you guys can see, the process is almost done here. One thing that I do have to mention before I am able to go to the next part is the BIOS or the framework key for the Nintendo Switch emulators. Those files are going to not be included in this video. I can't give you a link where to get them either. I just recommend that you Google RetroArch BIOS pack online. I can't give you a link because it's copyrighted. So I can't give you any reference. Just Google the BIOS online for the emulators. Uh, usually they have them in packs or you can find it separately. Or if you have the console and you legitimately have it, you can just put it on there as well. But I cannot give you a link to that. Uh, but just look it up on Google. That's all I really have to say. 
and usually some emulators will ask for it but not all of them a bunch of them do require them such as the ps1s and ps2 i believe so if you can get those off of google good for you so it's pretty much coming to the near the end of the install of this as you guys can see yuzu is not configured which i believe that's the nintendo switch emulator or and it tells me right here that you need the keys and frameware for that I cannot provide you to that link. Just Google it and try to find it on your own. But I will show you where you can place them. Uh, and right here, it just tells you like PS1, PS2 will require BIOS. Um, I can't provide you that link either, but I will show you where you can place them in your folder. So first of all, before I actually go into the folders, I want to show you what the Steam ROM manager is. Basically, what this is, it uh, gives you a list of the emulators on the side. And you can check off all the ones you don't want to use. So if there's an emulator you're really not going to use for your retro arch or your Steam in general, you can check them off here um, by just clicking on them if you don't want to use them. Uh, so make it, this is basically your personal preference of what emulators you don't want to use. But this is where you're going to get your artwork for your games and your emulators as well. As you guys can see, I uh, have preview right here. We're going to click on this and this will generate an app list which will give you like uh, several different images for your emulator. As you guys can see right there, uh, it will also provide artwork for your games. I personally have these games so... I do have the legal copy of these games. I own these games and these are my backups. So basically it will provide you an image of the games uh, that you want to use on your Steam Deck. Once you generate everything and then it finds everything, all you have to do is click Save App List right here on the bottom. What this basically does, it allows you to keep these games in your um, Steam program. And it gives you an image, which you can just click on that and it will boot up your game. All right, so that's basically what it does. Every time you add new ROMs or something, you're going to have to generate an app list and just save app list. And that will integrate itself into the Steam program, the main Steam program. That's pretty much all you have to do. And then you can exit out, um, return to game mode. Uh, no, um, basically exit all that out. And the other thing I have to mention that Steam has to be closed when you're adding ROMs or when you're adding those um, lists of the stuff onto Steam. You have to close Steam. Um, but before we open up Steam, I also want to go back and show you guys what the folders inside look like. You're going to want to go ahead again and go into your file manager and you're going to want to go ahead and and go into the home area and you're going to want to go to emulation as you guys can see this is the emulation area and this will give you your roms folders this is where you can place your roms for whatever system you're trying to emulate so if you download a roms or if you have your backup roms or something like that you can put them here this is where you'll be placing your ROMs. I cannot provide you links to ROMs or games uh, due to copyright. So please do not ask me where can I get ROMs. Don't ask me. I cannot provide you. So if you have backups of your games, you can put them in here or just Google whatever you need to. But I will not provide you a link, unfortunately. But this is the area where you will put your ROMs. Another area that's important is the BIOS area. Like I said, I cannot provide you a link to the BIOS that you can put in here. Uh, just recommend that you Google RetroArch uh, BIOS Pack or BIOS Online. Um, if you are going to or if you have the BIOS from your console, you can also back those up. I will not be putting a link to this as well. And basically, if you ever get your BIOS, just place them into this section right here. Like I said, I cannot provide you guys any links because that is copyright. So I will not be providing you any links to any bios. But you can Google it on your own. Anyways, that's pretty much it. You have your save storage area here uh, for saves. Uh, I wouldn't really mess around with those areas. So it's not really necessary. Alright, so 
your programs i was going to mention some of the stuff that this brings i don't know why mine didn't transfer to the desktop but uh it did once already but maybe because i'm using it on my piece on my monitor that's probably why but you should see this it gives you the option to your emo deck desktop emo deck bin updates um if you want to update your program uh, remember emulators get updates all the time so i do recommend you get the emo deck bin update when you need to update your program basically what this will do it basically updates your emu deck uh, i'll even open it up so you guys can see what it basically does it applies an update to everything um even tells you what kind of stuff what tools do you want to get to the latest version and basically just says that you press ok and it'll update by itself i'm not going to update anything because i just downloaded the latest one so i don't really need to do any of that all right, so now we can open up Steam Deck and, well, not Steam Deck, but like the Steam program. And you guys should be able to see some of the stuff that it starts including. So as you guys can see, it shows your emulators here. Everything's added here. Like it has its own images and everything. So it's really cool. Not going to lie. That's the way it shows up on your library. Everything shows up on your library pretty much all in a good order as well. So that's what I like about it. It's really organized and it's really awesome when it shows up here. So you should have everything showing up here. Um, and then, then you have your own categorized as well. For some reason, my other one didn't show up. But either way, your emulator show up here. Everything shows up here. And your games are going to show up as well. Uh, like you see, my Game Boy Advance games are there. Um, but my other one didn't show up. Not that it matters, but basically I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. If you're having trouble with a ROM not showing up, I uh, recommend you go to Steam ROM Manager again, uh, which should be on your desktop. And you can redo the Generate the App List and save it. And it should show up again. So as you guys can see, Final Fantasy Crisis Core actually showed up here. You're really not going to get that many stuff here, but um, it definitely will show up again. Um, so as you guys can see, pretty much everything is set up here, and you should pretty much be set to go. Um, now, I would recommend that we go back to... We go back to the regular the regular Steam OS, not the desktop mode. All right, guys, that took a while for it to boot up for some reason. I have no clue why it took a while to boot up. But basically, um, now that we're in the main OS area, you guys can see everything that's non-Steam has been added. As you guys can see, your games will show up here with the artwork, which looks really nice. And then you can just click on play and it'll launch it straight from your Steam Deck. Isn't that like really awesome? Like you literally launching a game and it literally just works. So it's really cool. Uh, this is one of the coolest things that I have seen ever on a portable console. And it just launches it just like if it's, it was integrated into the OS. That's what I like about it. Um, obviously, you can also change your settings. I don't remember. I think there's save states as well. Um, and you can configure it however you want it as well. But it comes out there like it's official and, and everything. So I definitely do recommend you also can boot up the emulation station or retro arch. Uh, you can also uh, boot up retro arch as you guys can see. I like emulation station because it kind of makes it look really clean like a complete hub of your stuff. And it shows you your games as well. It looks really cool. It's all up to your personal preference and it detects it there as well. If you want a different type of interface. Alright, so one more thing that I'm going to show you guys is we're going to go back into desktop mode. 
because I, I forgot to show you one more thing like the hotkeys where you can actually find the hotkeys and everything that you need for the Steam. all right so it booted back up into my pc desktop mode um and there was just one thing that i wanted to show you guys on the emo deck website that i didn't show you um here if we go to the faq area there's going to be a cheat cheat and basically this will tell you what kind of files you can use on each emulator uh, it's basically like a guide for the files that you want to use uh, isos for certain emulators um, different files that it supports uh, depending on the emulator you're using for your roms um, but the coolest thing about coming here is that it literally shows you the hotkeys that way, when you're using like Retro Arch, Dolphin, Citra, C Menu, uh, C Menu, or Yuzu, PCS X2, RPCS3, uh, it'll show you the hotkeys that you can use in order to do safe stay, fast forward, and several different stuff. And that pretty much sums it up. Um, there's really not much more to do after that. You should be able to install this and you should be able to get every single emulator you want um sorry i couldn't show you guys link to roms or stuff like that as the bios because that is copyrighted i'm not allowed to do that but you can always do a google search on your own and i mean it's it's really awesome so that's pretty much it guys i just wanted to show you a tutorial how to install pretty much every single emulator make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if this video was very useful to you